Hey guys, it is I, Kuro Ninja, and I've made a lot of videos about Afataro Sentai Don Brothers, but now the series has come to an end. So I'm going to be ranking the major characters in the series from worst to best. There's 27 major characters to rank, and I also recommend watching Don Brothers before you watch this video because there's going to be big spoilers. Oh, and a lot of people know about my thoughts on Red Rangers, so for the sake of this video, I will be pretending that Don Momotaro is not a Red Ranger. Another thing I should mention is that I didn't put Jiro's best friend Rumi on the list because I forgot. Her ranking will remain a mystery for all eternity. Now with that out of the way, let us begin. Starting off in the D tier, we got Mother, a character who gives orders to Don Murasame. However, we never actually see what she looks like, and she never even appeared in the series. Jin Momoi was thought to be the mentor of the Dawn Brothers before it began. However, he hasn't really done much in the series other than raise Taro and provide exposition. In fact, the only thing he does in the series is give exposition. I still rank him slightly higher than Mother because exposition is important to understand what's going on in the series, but his exposition usually gives more questions than answers. I could go more into detail, but my visiting hours are over. Usually whenever there's a group of three, there's one person in the trio who feels like the third wheel. In the Noto trio, that is Sonoza, whose name sounds like the Japanese phrase for part three. Unlike the other two members of the Noto trio, I don't like Sonoza that much. I don't mind his goal of trying to understand emotions, but the way he does it comes off as annoying in the beginning. There's also his character dynamic with one of the Don brothers, but we'll get to that later. Alright, the D tier is complete. As you can see, I enjoyed Don Brothers so much that I feel like only three characters could fit in the D tier. But now it's time to move on to the C tier. Don Killer only appeared in one episode, but there is a very good reason why he's the first one on the C tier. One thing I'm a big fan of in a series is the world building. I've done a lot of world building in my stories to the point that the Kuro Ninja multiverse as a whole doesn't seem like just another Sentai fanfiction series. Unfortunately, Don Killer only appeared in one episode, but he made a good first impression. If Don Killer made a good first impression, then so did his opponent for all eternity, Don Killer Killer. I like Don Killer Killer more than Don Killer for one reason. His name sounds a lot like the Japanese word Kira Kira, the onomatopoeia for something sparkling. Terasaki, the Penguin Juto, is the keeper of the fort where all the Juto live and the guardian of Jiro Momotani. Like the Don Killers, he contributes to the world building, but his relevance in the plot is more important. However, he's only been in a few episodes, and the fact that Jiro's friends in the village were all illusions the whole time also unintentionally creates a plot hole. Because if Jiro's friends weren't real the whole time, then how come there's moments in the earlier episodes where they talk to each other when he's not there? Minoru Ono is an interesting character in Don Brothers. His family name is a reference to what the audience is thinking whenever he appears in an episode. In his first appearance as Shurikenki, he was just an afterthought. But then, he made his return in episode 28 as another Hitotsuki. And then he returned again, only to fall at the hands of Sonoi, who was reborn with a new power-up. And then he inexplicably came back, but he didn't become a Hitotsuki until episode 49. Minoru's character development throughout the series is fascinating to look through, especially when you're watching the series again. Natsumi Kuramochi is a character we've only seen through Tsubasa's flashbacks. In fact, we don't even know her family name until episode 36. Despite being an important part of Tsubasa's character arc, she doesn't really do much in the series until the climax. <music> oh. 
Okay, so before we talk about Jiro, I'm treating him and Dangerous Jiro as two separate characters for this video. I personally found Don Dragoku to be very annoying, which is quite unusual because I generally have a positive attitude towards Sixth Rangers. But then I realized that that was the intended reaction. Jiro is supposed to represent what would happen if a Super Sentai fan had the chance to become an actual Sentai Ranger. Not only that, but he was introduced as Taro's replacement, so it would make sense that he has the qualities of a typical Red Ranger. As you know, there are no good Red Rangers in Super Sentai, but at least Don Dragoku is a Sixth Ranger, not a Red one. When I first started watching Don Brothers, I was a bit too harsh on my critique of Haruka Kito, but that was because she wasn't portrayed by the actress I wanted. But after watching episode 43, I realized that Oni's sister wasn't as bad as I thought. She's just a bit overrated. Now as much as I'm not a big fan of Oni's sister for ruining my already near impossible hopes and dreams, there's still a few things I like about her. For example, most of the early episodes are focused on her instead of the Red Ranger, which I think is one reason why the series works so well. There's also an alternate version of her who went by the name Naoki Shina. And you already know my thoughts on anyone whose name is Shina. Alright, now that I'm done talking about Oni's sister, the C tier is done, and now we're moving on to the B tier. Sonoya is one of the final bosses in the series and the first character that I've ranked higher than Oni's sister. And it's for a great reason. Even before his official debut, he seemed very threatening, which is a perfect look for a final boss. It helps that the actor also portrayed one of the most dangerous and sinister characters in Tokusatsu, Zuo Bird from Dobutsu Sentai Zuoji. Up next is the other final boss, Sono Na. She also looked interesting the moment her character was revealed, and I haven't seen the final episode yet, but after the recording of this video, I will watch it. Hopefully, Sono Na won't do anything to make me change my mind on where I put her in the list. Up next we got the third Noto in a row and it's Sonoroku. Sonoroku is basically a foil to Sonoza. Not only does he seem more intimidating, but he's also more appealing than Sonoza. The Kat Juto as characters were very mysterious at first, and their purpose was to introduce the Juto as another adversary the Don brothers would eventually have to face. But they also serve a major role in Tsubasa's character arc, which parallels the concept of cats versus dogs. There's a lot of intrigue with this character named Kaito, who looks oddly like Zen Kaiser for some reason. Now, I have no idea why he reminds me of Zen Kaiser, but Kita Komagine, the actor who portrays this character, had also portrayed Zen Kaiser in the previous season, so it could just be a fun Easter egg. Anyway, Kaito is the owner of Cafe Dambura, and he also takes the role of the mentor figure. His real purpose, however, is to introduce some of the plot devices in the series, such as the Kibidango, the button that summons Don Killer, and the Kibi Points. Cafe Dambura also acts as a meeting place for the Don Brothers. Saruhara is the blue ranger of the team. I think he's alright. What I just did right there is the one thing Shinichi Saruhara is known for in the series. I consider him an underrated character, and there were a lot of people who say he was underused, but I think his unimportance to the major story arcs was done on purpose. You see, Saru brother practices a philosophy known as Wabi Sabi, which is about embracing the beauty and imperfection. All the other Don brothers have important character arcs of their own, but it feels like Saru brother is just there to fill the Blue Ranger quota. Despite this, Shinichi is far from an afterthought, and I think he would be okay with not having his own character arc because that's what Wabi Sabi is all about. <music> the 
the Noto trio were introduced as the antagonists in the series, but what made them stand out was that they weren't villainous. They just had ideas that clashed with the Don brothers. The debut of Sonoshi changes that though. They're introduced as a villain and a foil of Sonoi, and they even made a return with their own group. Sonoshi and the rest of their trio are very interesting and their role as a new antagonist goes very well with the character growth of the other Noto, especially Sonoi and his dynamic with Taro. But now, the B tier is over and it's time to talk about not just the A tier, but we're now going into the top 10. Starting with number 10, we got Don Murasame. I know he didn't do much during the endgame, but there's a lot of things I like about him. First off, unlike most newer evil Sentai Rangers, he didn't get a redemption arc really. But the main reason why I like him is because he's a purple ranger, and he's also the first evil purple ninja ranger in Super Sentai. I've already covered Sonoshi and Sonoroku, but Sono Go is part of the top 10 for a similar reason as Don Murasame. Purple is my favorite color. Since the Noto count as Sentai Rangers, Sono Go is technically a purple ranger. I was really excited when she first appeared in the series, and then after that, loosely translated into Japanese, is Sono Go. I am the number one Sono Go fan, and if anyone says otherwise, here's some advice, just stick to talking about Majin. I am the Kuro Ninja of Earth Zero, Hibiki no Oja, and I'm here to do some damage control. It might seem like Kuro Ninja's picking a fight with a certain individual in the Toku community you might be familiar with, and chances are you probably know who it is, but the thing is, unlike the last guy Kuro Ninja made the mistake of trying to get the attention of, I actually like this guy's content, and I think he's a decent person. In fact, I'm subscribed to him because I think he makes good content. Besides, I have way less followers than him, and I doubt he's going to see my video. But in the rare, unlikely chance that he does, just know that Kuro Ninja is a pescatarian. That means he only eats fish, so he does not like starting beef with anyone. This is all just part of his persona. And as for me, I prefer doing other stuff. This channel is just a hobby for me, so I apologize if Kuro Ninja comes across as a bit hostile. I actually think it would be nicer if we all just agree that both of us are the number one Sono Go fan. That will make things much easier. Okay, before I was rudely interrupted by Hibiki no Oja, I was talking about being the number one Sono Go fan in the world. But now I'm gonna talk about who's in the number eight spot, and that is Miho Kijino, the wife of Tsuyoshi Kijino, who is actually a Juto that copied the appearance and personality of Tsubasa's girlfriend Natsumi. Miho is ranked higher than Natsumi because she had more appearances in the show. Earlier I said that I would be treating Don Dragoku and Don Torobolt as two separate characters. I also said earlier that Jiro Momotani came off as annoying, but then Dangerous Jiro made his debut, adding more layers of intrigue to the sixth ranger of the team. It turns out this version of Jiro is the original personality, and the Dragoku version of Jiro manifested so that he could have friends. This version of Jiro is what gives both versions of him a lot of depth and stuff. He represents a hidden side. It makes sense for Jiro's character arc to end with his two selves fusing together. At number 6 is another member of the Don clan, and the protagonist of the series, Momoe Taro. Taro possesses the qualities of an epic hero, and he's also literally unable to tell lies, as in, if he doesn't tell the truth, he's gonna drop dead. Also, the fact that he's good at everything has estranged him from his friends. His own companions don't like him at first, but they slowly start warming up to him, which is probably what would happen if the members of a team are chosen randomly.
I already talked about Momoi Taro, and I think it's fitting that up next on the list is his rival, Sonoi. Antagonists will always be more interesting to me than the protagonist, so it's no surprise that Sonoi is ranked slightly higher than Taro. Sonoi and Taro's character dynamic works very well with each other because they have different views of humanity, which makes them clash at times, but they also work very well together as a team. It's also made clear that Sonoi and Taro are both equals and one of them can defeat the other. Tsuyoshi Kijino is one of the most well-known characters in the series, and for good reason too. One of his most established character traits is that he has devoted to his wife Miho, to the point where he transformed into Hitotsuki three times. But that's what I like about Kijino. Kiji brother is more of a human being than a hero, and human beings have flaws. Imagine if you had a girlfriend and you found out she wasn't real. You would feel hurt, right? Thank goodness that has never happened to me. All right, that's everyone on the A tier. We are now moving on to the top three, the best of the best, and they're all in the S tier. I was expecting Tsuyoshi to be my favorite member of the Dawn Brothers, but it was actually Tsubasa Inuzuka who got that honor. Inu Brother is the most interesting character in the series, and the more I watch Dawn Brothers, the more I notice some similarities between Inu Brother and myself. I have a theory that Inu Brother is based on myself. If you think about it, we both have a girlfriend who got trapped in another dimension for about a year, we're both lone wolves of a team, we both have experiences with traveling to other worlds. We were both trapped in a dark place for a while, only to be saved by someone named Sheena. And we both have had interactions with a purple ninja ranger. That's right, Inu brother is Kuro Ninja. I already mentioned this in my top 5 Hitotsuki video, but Tamaki is my second favorite character in Avataro Sentai Dawn Brothers. Tamaki is portrayed by Moeka Ukawa, whose performance was so inspiring it made me think about Jaka and Changeman, two Sentai seasons I wouldn't care about otherwise. Even if no one's acknowledging me as the number one fan of Sono Go, I can still relax knowing that no one cares about Tamaki more than me. You can argue about who is the number one fan of Sono Go or Inu Brothers or even Kiji brother, but it's clear that I'm the number one fan of Tamaki and no one can take that away from me. And now it's time to talk about the number one character in Dawn Brothers. You might be expecting some kind of plot twist, but my number one favorite character in this series is exactly who you think it is. I have good things to say about most of the characters, but Sono Ni is my favorite character in the entire series. She was my favorite character since day one, and at the end of Dawn Brothers, she has exceeded my expectations with this very strong character dynamic also involving my favorite of the Don brothers, Tsubasa Inuzuka. In fact, she's the only one in the series I've devoted an entire video to. But this video is not actually over yet. You might have noticed something missing from this video. Something that has been present in my other videos about Don brothers. But worry not, because there is a secret character on this tier list. And she's ranked in the number zero spot on the top ten list. Even higher than Sono Ni. And at number zero on the list is the best Don Brothers character of all, the one portrayed by Mikoto Yamada. I have been a fan of Mikoto Yamada since 2020, and my favorite part of Don Brothers was when she showed up. Mikoto Yamada is a legendary idol turned actress, and her appearance in Don Brothers was so shocking and so unexpected, nobody remembers if it even happened. But I do, because I've been a fan of Mikoto Yamada for a very long time, and I'm hoping that someday she can appear in a tokusatsu series again. Anyway, that is all for this video. If you enjoyed, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And remember, I have nothing to do with Shiro Ninja.